Yes. Okay. So yesterday we have like a few our guys have tried try to give the inputs for the SWPM for the installation of the SAP application. So many are tried and uh, giving the inputs, SID and everything. So you can see all are getting installed. The step, steps are creating now. So you can see configuring the DB client, server, downtime configurations, users, so everything. So while doing all these steps, there is one huge step where SAP will be builded. That is called the import above step. In the import above step, this is a very long running step in the import above step. So this will take four hours or five hours, this step, each step, only, only this step will take a longer time. So remaining steps, one minute, two minutes only, but only this step will take four to five hours in between. So why? Because here, all the jobs, all the data, what, what in the import above phase. So here we have, so in the SAP software, here we have the exports. So all these exports will be imported into the SAP level. So import above here, actual SAP system will be builded here in this step. So during the installation, so what is the longer ending step means import above step. This will take longer time. So, so why? Because here in this step, SAP will be builded. SAP system will be created here. So after that post load activities, these all are the, all the common. So it's very simple. So it will be completed very soon. So actual thing is here. So import above step. So if anyone asks you, so what is the major step during the installation, any kind of SAP installation, what is the major step means import above step. So in the name itself, so here all the packages will be imported. All the nodes, all the exports will be imported into the above. Above and SAP, SAP level. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So this will continue to run, but we don't want to run this one. So we have already SAP systems are there. So we, if you want, you can practice it later. So let's start after that, what we have to do after that, what we have to do after you build the systems, what is our next action item? So you build the system, SAP system is created. So what is your next action item? So next action item, we need to log into the our SAP systems. We need to log into the SAP systems. So that is called the post installation activities, post installation activities. So what we have to do as part of the post installation. So installation, pre-installation, pre-installation, post-installation. Post-installation means after the SAP installed, what you have to do. So just we need to log into the log into the SAP system. So to log into the SAP system via SAP GUI, you required. So you cannot directly log into the SAP system. We have to use the one tool. That tool is called the SAP GUI. So our SAP logon pad, both are same, just only SAP logon pad, both just only naming convention is different. Okay. So SAP GUI or SAP logon pad. Okay. SAP logon pad, we can use it. So how to log in then? How to log in then? So we have SAP logon pad is available in all our desktops. It's from here onwards. It's a very important. Definitely you have to log in and you have to practice it. So you have to log into the SAP systems. How means there is a in your desktop. So you have the SAP logon pad is available. SAP logon pad. So for this logon pad in every desktop, like uh, suppose you log in with your user, there is a icons are available SAP logon pad. So every user, every desktop automatically the SAP logon pad is available. In the real time also, we have the SAP logon pad. Suppose if you want, you can see my screen. Here I also having the SAP logon pad. So same as like, so for, for us. <coughs> so, uh, so for we are also having the SAP logon pad here. Then one just to open the SAP logon pad here. Okay, open the SAP logon pad here. After you installation for Windows Server, you will get the SAP MMC. So SAP MMC. Let me remove all these things. So let me remove all these things. 
in my log on pad. Okay, so we have so empty empty logon pad is there now. So for you also you get the empty logon pad. So for you, so there is a desktop. In the desktop, you will see the SAP MMC SAP MMC. So here, what is this used for? What exactly when it will be created? Who will be created means? So this will be created during the installation. So installation SWPM will create this one here. You will see the our SID here you will see the our SID our SID means our SAP system ECP ECP is our SAP system it will be created here it will be available here okay so it will be available here so 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 by by seeing this one we will come to know okay this is our SID this is our instance numbers so this is our instance number 11 and 12 are my instance numbers so whenever you are building the SAP system two instances will be created. One is the ASCS instance and second one is the primary application server instance will be created. Sir, how can we remember, how can we recognize which one is ASCS, which one is primary application server? So, I will come to that part. Okay. How to start then? So, so by default, whenever you've done the installation, SAP will be started automatically, but now it is stopped. You can see, so uh, to start this one, right click on the SAP, just SAP MMC, open the SAP MMC. So here, just click on the start button. Just click on the start button. Here it will ask the user ID and password. Just enter the user ID and password, you can enter it. So then it will come to the here. You can see here, so it is starting mode. It is starting. So first ASCS will start green color, then application will server application server will come to the so green color green color means it is started so yellow color means this starting mode starting so the starting mode completely not started okay this way we can start the sap systems how to start and stop the sap system means so how to start and stop the sap system means so we have to how to start and stop the SAP systems. So after installation, it will be start. Suppose if you want to stop it, so go to the MMC, SAP MMC icon, then click on the SID, right click on the SID, then you can just use the stop command. It will stop the SAP system. Start command, it will start the SAP systems. So this way we have to stop and start the this one. This is the one procedure. This is the method number one. This is the option. Okay. This is the so uh, uh, method number one, okay, option one, we have to use this procedure. So then option number two, option number two, option, option number two, we have the two ways we can start it. So option number two, just in the command prompt mode, in the CMD mode, just execute the stop SAP all or start SAP all, start SAP all commands, okay. Please remember these commands. It's a very, very, very important commands. So in the interviews, they will ask you how to start the SAP. So through MMC, we can start it simply. But I want to start and stop the in the command prompt mode. So we have to use this command, stop SAP space all, start SAP space all. This is especially for the Linux systems, especially for the Linux based systems. Linux, you don't have the desktop. Just to you only command prompt, you will get it out. So you have to use this one. Okay. For Windows, we have the for Windows, we have the so MMC. Definitely Windows, we have the MMC. So just to directly go to the MMC SID, you can add it. So you can see here SAP is green. Green means SAP is started up and running now. So then how to log in now? How to log into the our SAP system now? How to log into the our SAP system? Open the SAP login pad in your browser, in your desktop, in your desktop, all your desktops, you have the SAP login pad. Open this one. Now, <clears throat> now we need to add our systems. We need to add our systems here. We need to add our systems here. So how to add, how to add our systems to the login pad? How to add? 
So this is also important concept here. Why? Because when you join the organization, some organizations, they have automatically will add it. Some organization, you need to manually add it. So we are not sure which organization we are going to join. So that's the reason what you have to do. You should know as a business consultant or as a SAP consultant, you should know how to add the systems into SAP Logon Pad. It's a very important. So I will tell you one uh, example here, the importance of how to add the system. So in my previous batch colleagues, so one of the person is from Kamam. So uh, we attended five technical interviews and one HR, uh, he joined it actually, he joined in the organization, everything is went well. So after one week, he, his manager asked he, he to share the screen. So he shared the screen. So his manager asked, so can you add the SAP systems into, I will give the one SAP system in the screen sharing session, can you add one SAP system into logon pad? So that is the question, that is the assignment is manager given. So he is opened, he opened then, so he is unable to click, he opened and he is unable to add it. He don't know how to add it as well. He don't know how to add it as well. He did the five technical interviews, one HR down, one HR interview down, and he joined it after release. He joined it one week back, complete one week completed. Everything is done. After one week, his manager, based upon his behavior, manager asked. So during the screen sharing session, can you add SAP entry? SAP can you add systems into SAP Logon Pad? So, so he he don't know how to add it. Immediately, he got terminated from the organization. I told him many times, so please concentrate on the, in the classes, please practice it. Each and every small topic also, it's very, very important. So, so please listen like that. So many times I, I informed. He called me and explained, sir, you explained me very well, but uh, I, I forgot something like that. He explained, he informed me. So, so, so just to listen and also each and every point is very important. Sorry, uh, thank you guys. So, okay, let's come to the our topic now. Okay, <laughs> leave it out. Okay, so yeah, this is the in the organization. Some organizations you will get the empty logon pad, but you should know how to add the systems into the logon pad. So then you have to go to the click on new button. New here you have the you can see here new connection. New connection. Just click on the next button. So here description. Description means what is the system for SAP ECC. Any description you can give it here. SAP ECC system, something like that, or SAP ECC, or SAD, whatever you want. But application server name, application server name, you should not give any application server name means where SAP is running. So here our SAP ECP is running. So what is our application server name? Can you go to the here and you can see here SAP Windows is our application server name. Then immediately I can go here SAP Windows or your manager will provide you the one Excel sheet. In the Excel sheet you have the all the host names, all the server names, instance number and I said but you should know where to fill it, where to fill it. So instance number, instance number means what is our instance number? You joined newly, what is your instance number? So here, whenever you open the MMC, here you can see instance number is the 11 and 12. So 12 is for the ASCS and 11 is for the primary application server. So just give the 11 primary application server instance number, we have to give it. What is SID? ECP is our SID. Just click on the next button, next button, finish it. Then the entry is added here. Okay, once again, see here. So just so just click on the next button, just give the ECP or application server name also SAP Windows, then instance number. So 12 SID ECP and okay, this is correct, right? So I added two systems. So two or any, any entries, number of entries, you can add it, but different description, you can add it. But so how to log in then? Once you added, just click on this button, just click on the logon. 
you will log in otherwise you can double click it you will get the sap screen here you will get the sap screen here you see here you got the sap screen here you got the sap screen here so which means your sap is up and running you are able to open so when you click on this button you got this one so what is this both are sap systems only right both are sap system only right so we got the connection to path is broken we are unable to open what exactly wrong went what exactly went here anyone port number is not yes exactly the instance number is wrongly given here so if you provide instance number wrongly definitely you won't log into the sap system you have to correctly match the so system parameters the host name instance number so sid all these things we have to we have to give correctly then only we can log into the sap system otherwise we cannot log into the sap system few users they will report like sir I, we are unable to log into the sap system so we have given the these are the parameters means just cross check go to the edit mode what are the parameters you have given is it correct or not is it correct or not you have to give correctly then just click on the ok button just click on the so this one means so you will log into the sap system here you will log into the sap system here you will open the sap application server so we cannot directly open the sap system through sap login pad or sap gui we have to open the sap system that's why in every person's desktop you have the sap login pad you have to open the sap login pad the first first time you need to configure this entry it's not the rocket science it's not very critical just to go just click on the new entry connection just enter the all the details here description anything application server name not anything you have to enter the application server name means where you install the sap so they in this host only we install the sap what is this host name what is this computer name sap windows instance number sid you can give it just click on the next button next button finish it so you will get the entry added here then just click select and, and log on we will our sap screen is opened here your sap screen is opened so this is the way we have to log into the our sap systems this is the way we have to log into the our sap systems okay so stop and start we learn and how to add the systems into the so how to add the systems into <coughs> sorry sap so sap login pad so here initially when you log in we will get the so here what is client here what is client here what is the user what is the password we have to use it what is the client user password we have to use it here what is the client user password we have to use it here okay so so before that after installation or during the installation there are the few things will be created automatically during the installation few things will be created those few things are very very important things for basics purpose okay so there are the two clients two clients will be created two clients will be created one is the triple zero and double zero one concept and two users created in sap two users created in sap one is the sap star and ddic and two users will be created in operating system level one is the sid adm and my name is it correct sap yes. services sid these are the two users will be created so what is this client means so in sap we have the client concept in sap we have the client concept so within this client only we have to do the our business our configurations our development our functional scenarios configuration and everything so within this clients only so but so by default by default client number is for the two three numbers so it should starts from triple zero two and triple nine any number in between any number you can create it but sap during the installation sap will give the two clients one is the triple zero client 
and double zero one clients. These are the two clients are available in SAP. So these are the SAP clients. That's why we will call it as the master clients. So what are the master clients in SAP? This is one of the interview question. Frequently asked me in interview questions. So triple zero and double zero one. So what is client? In SAP, if you want to do the business, if you want to save the business data, definitely you need to create a client. Manually, we have to create the client. So how to create means we'll discuss in the our client administration topic. But here, so SAP during the installation, there are two clients will be created. So one is the triple zero and double zero one client. Two users will be created, SAP users, SAP users to log into the SAP users, SAP star and DDIC. And two users in the operating system, SID, EDM and SAP services, SID. These are the two users in the operating system level, two users in the SAP level and two clients will be created. So for clients related, we will get more information during the client administration topic. For now, you can just remember. So during the installation, two clients will be created. So those are the triple zero and double zero one client. Those are the triple zero and double zero one clients will be created. Okay. Just remember these things. Okay. Then next starts with next we'll start. <coughs> So how to log in? So now you you look you have the true clients, right? So triple zero or double zero one clients we have. So double zero one or triple zero, those are the master clients, two master clients actually. Here in the master client, what exactly will be there? In the master clients, we have the master data will be available. Master client, master data, simple. Okay. So we have to log in. Now, which user we have to use it now? So we have either SAP star or DDIC. And the required password, we have to give it. The required password, we have to give it. So I have entered the password, DDIC password I have entered. Then I am able to log into the SAP screen now. This is the SAP home page. This is the SAP easy access menu. This is the SAP home page. So this is the SAP, our easy access menu. Okay, got it? So this is the way we have to log into the SAP systems. Okay, once again, just removing and closing this one. So opening the SAP logon pad here. Okay, so you have the entry you already configured. Just double click on it, you will open the SAP system here. Okay, here by default, you will get the triple zero. So I will change this one Why? because under the client, we will get it out after the so later we have to create it manually, but this is already installed system, right? So that's why I will remove the that client here. Just bear with me for one minute. So all these things we will we will discuss actually. All these things we will discuss. So all whatever <clears throat> we are doing here, everything we will discuss. So now just right click and stop it, stop it. So what exactly happens now? You already logged into the SAP system. Now you stopping, you are stopping the SAP. So what exactly? All your sessions will be disconnected. All your sessions will be disconnected. See, otherwise. Yeah, you can see application server is shut down application server is shut down which means all our sap sessions are disconnected logged sap sessions are disconnected logged sap sessions are disconnected now right click and start it will be started so this is the way we have to stop and start it so sometimes what what we will get some other people will stop and they will go outside when you are trying to log in you will get the message like okay sap system is not reached in this case what you have to do okay as a technical consultant, you need to assume, okay, SAP system is currently stopped. Maybe you have to go to the MMC, then you need to start it. You need to start it. This way we have to use it. We have to start it. Okay. So this is the way SAP is starting now. Okay. So this is the 
clients default matter default concept these are the default things will come as part of the installation and also as part of the installation here we will get the two instances right we discussed already two instances we will get it all two instances means sap equal to sap means so one is the primary application server plus ascs instance so what is this so primary application server and ascs so in sap in sap we will get the these two instances so every sap we will get the two instances so one is the primary application server second one is the so above central services above system central services we will get it the all these things here above central central services just when you open it then you now you will get the sap screen here so client number is changed so we need to log into the ddic and the password you have to use it the password you have to use it so i and i logged into the system now so see here this is the sap home page this is the theme sap easy access theme login screen so this is the sap easy access home screen this is the home screen here what we have to do here what we have to do it here so in the sap here we have to enter the transactions transaction code based concept here suppose if you go any applications if you go one of the browser in browser also one of the application if you go any one of the browser or if browser not on the browser if you go to the zoom zoom also one of the application here you will get the tabs everything right tabs sub tabs new everything you will get to from here in the in the application side but especially for the sap is for the transaction code based concept transaction codes so you need to remember the transaction codes and you need to enter the transaction codes where we have to enter the transaction code so you can see here left side top there is a okay code box this box is called the this empty box is called the okay code box here we need to enter the sap transaction codes sap transaction codes you need to enter it when you enter the sap transaction code you will get the sap screen you will get it out related page you will get it out so transaction code means shortcut to the your business application business page shortcut to the your business whatever the transaction code enter you will get the that business page you will get it out the same way developers they have the some transaction codes functional team they have the transaction codes sales they have the transaction codes and basis we have the few transaction codes we need to remember all these transaction codes and we need to enter the transaction codes here we need to enter the transaction codes here okay this is the way we need to execute the transactions okay so before we go and start the technical discussion so here the two instances will be created two instances will be created so during the installation during the installation sap system will be builded so which means one family will be created so new house we are builded right new house we builded means new sap system we builded then who will sit inside of the who will stay inside of the house so one family right one family will stay here one family will stay inside of the home so same who will stay inside of the server who will stay right this is all same right so who will process our sap tra transactions sap list and everything who will process so whenever you do the installation there are the seven resources seven process seven persons seven humans seven sap work process will be created seven sap work process will be created here in sap we have seven process will be created suppose if you are if you ask me how many family members they stay in home means four family members right same as like in sap seven family members they will stay in inside of the sap so what are those seven family members right so we have whenever you build the system they are the by default the two users sap level db level os level and also two clients will be created and two instances will be everything is two two instances will be created but as with respect to, to the sap work process sap work why they have named it as the work process means in sap this process will do the work each and every work whatever the work you give whatever the transaction you give this this work process will process your work that's why this is called the sap work process these work process are seven work process 
so they have named it as like so d v e b m g s so d means dialog work process okay v means update work process okay e means so nq work process so very important guys b means so background background work process okay background b okay b means background background work process <clears throat> m means so message m means message message server okay g means gateway s means spool in the printing in printing we will use the spool work these are the seven work process will be created during the sap installation so sap installation means by default automatically few things will be created in that one of the thing is sap work process these are the so work process who will perform our work in sap level who will take care of in this one? how inside of the home our our family members are staying same inside of the servers these are the seven family members these are the seven work process will stay inside of the home so inside of the home so in the shortcut so there is a syntax like d v e b m g s so you just you can remember this one d dialog update nq background message server gateway spool so like that we have the so we have to remember it okay this is sap provided syntax okay it's not my own syntax sap provided so just abbreviation just you can remember the all this seven spool work process will be created where are these inside of the home inside of, where can we see this one so you can see mmc as well you can see in mmc as well you can see this work process and everything how where so if you go to the mmc here we have the two instances will be created right so here seven process two instances means two bed two instances means here we have the primary application server and additional sorry in the so ascs instance will be created so in the primary application server we have the five process will be created and additional application servers we have the two of two process so message server plus nq server will be hosted in ascs instance so remaining five will be hosted in db b ds so remaining five will be created here here so which means seven is equal to so five plus two just this formula just you can remember okay so so sap means sap means here we have two instances primary application server plus ascs instances right ascs instance so here primary application server means we have the five process right d v b g s plus ascs means message server and server so how can we recognize previously we have one question left we left one question one doubt what is means in this two which one is ACS instance, which one is application server, SAP application server. So, which one is application server means, so where we have message server, NQ server is running, that is called the ACS instance, ACS instance. Suppose if you go to the process list, you see message server, NQ server is running, which means this is the ACS instance. So, where remaining work process like dia dialog update background pool update where we have remaining work process are available so including so here you can see the gateway where we have others are available so though that is called the sap application server that is called the sap application server okay now you got right how to recognize which one is acs instance which one is application server sap application server got it any questions anyone sir so you will get it out so you have already sap login pad is installed in our desktops so normally in all organizations so sap login login pad will be installed so uh automatically if you want to install we can also do the installation it's not like uh, just one file if you go that file just double click it it will be installed how you will install the media player same way you can install this login pad as well same 
go to the SAV software. So we somewhere it is available. So you can download and we can install it. So I will download it for you. <coughs> I will keep it here in the C softwares only so that you can just uh, if you double click it, that will be installed. It's already installed, right? It will show you like it's, it's already installed, something like that. Okay. So, but few, most of the organization, so it will be installed automatically by their IT team. IT teams, they will install the SAP login pads and everything. We don't need to do that one. Okay. So, just. Okay. So, this is a way we need to remember which one is SAP application server, which one is the, so ACS instance. So, simple. We have the two instances. One is the one applicant, one instance, we have the message server and queue server. One is the ACS means remaining one is application server, right? Application server contains, so you can see the above work process table. You will see the all the work process here. Here all are, so what is the status? Waiting, 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 waiting funds, waiting for the user request. All work process are waiting for the user request here. So which means, so all are waiting. So it's a running status. So all these processes are running, which means so here the services are running here. The services are running here. The services are running here. So if it is only stop, we cannot log into the SAP system. So, so all should be up and running. Basically, everything should be green status. Okay. This is the way we need to start and stop how to log into the our SAP systems and how to recognize which one is the ACS instance, which one is the application server, okay? This is the way we need to remember, okay? Got it? So, apart from that, so once you log into the SAP systems, all will log into the SAP systems, we can use the default user ID and password. I will share in the group what is the passwords for this one, okay? After that, what we have to do here? So, we have to start our work here. So, the first one, work process we need to discuss about all these work process what exactly each and every work process will do what is his responsibility suppose in our home our family members will stay including father mother kids right everything so what your father will do means we can tell something right what exactly whatever he is doing he we will tell same as like if someone ask you what exactly daila work process is doing responsible everything so means we should we are in a situation to tell the responsibility responsibility of the dialogue work process right so so now let's talk about the first work process dialogue work process okay now you understood that right? concept we have the seven work process seven family members in sap we have four we have so we have the family members in our home same as like in sap also sap means one home just you can you can assume like SAP means this is one home. So same as like we build the home. So we will go inside of the home and we will stay right. Same as like we build the SAP system. Then so then inside of the we have to go inside of the uh, server. So family members will say stay inside of the home. Same as like if these are the family members. These are the work process. Critical work process will stay inside of the server. So, but instead of this, they're staying means there is a one a work responsibility, each and every work process, there is a responsibility. So what is the responsibility of the, this dialogue work process here? What is the responsibility of the, this dialogue work process? So here, the responsibility of the dialogue work process is, so, so here we will discuss it about. So we'll discuss about the, the first work process. Okay. So they will discuss about the first work process, dialogue work process. Okay. We'll discuss only this dialogue work process and then we can stop it. Okay. So dialogue work process. So what is the use of the dialogue work process? So dialogue work process is responsible to, to pick the user request from SAP GUI. Simple. So dialogue work process is responsible to process the or pick, pick the, pick the, pick R. So process the user request from user request from user request from so use sap logon pad sap logon pad sap logon pad so whoever are users whoever log into the sap systems when you click on the sap 
automatically you are you, you are you are getting the sap screen means here one of the work process dialogue work process is processing your request dialogue work process processing your request because of this reason you are able to log into the sap system because of this reason you are able to log into the sap system so suppose if dialogue work process are not free automatically it assigned to the other work process means you cannot log in so here we have the five work process seven work process are available here okay seven work process are available here so by default we have the some numbers we will give multiple work process we will get it out here so multiple work process we will receive here so all our status is waiting status waiting means so here the work process status are here work process status are we have the multiple work process status here work process status so waiting wait running sleep okay sleep so stop error so thrive mode and hold status so these are the status of the work process each and work process they have the status so suppose if you ask me your uh, my status if i am in the meeting my status is the meeting status busy status if i am available well if i am away away status right same as like work process also so you can just to predict you can assume like work process also like humans how your family members were staying inside of the home these are also family members for sap so they will stay they will stay inside of the server so we should know what is their status and everything where can we check their status and everything we will come to know so here work process status so what are the exact status of the work process here so waiting waiting means all work process are waiting for the user request which means they are eagerly waiting for to pick up the user request running means so work process is running one user is logging and something is running work process are running sleep means work process are sleeping sleeping means it cannot pick up when you are, when we are speak when you are sleeping we cannot do anything right so like it's kind of like so we are not sure what exactly happening it kind of sleeping mode so when the work process will go to the sleep mode stop mode error mode thrive mode hold status we will discuss those things so sleep mode means work process will not pick up user request something is happening in the system it will stop it first of all it will go to the stop mode then error we will get it out so then it will go to the sleep mode then thrive mode thrive mode means whenever work process does not have enough memory it will go to the prime mode means and hold state hold means waiting for the actions other waiting for the holding so hold for other work process action something like that so this is the status of the work process just you can remember only how many status we have these are the status of the work process so major status are the waiting and running if the work process are waiting means so any user can log into the sap system they can do anything all the dialogue work process are waiting means any user can log in and he can do the transaction if all are running means if all the dialogue work process are running means so nothing is free then you cannot log into the now you cannot log into the your sap application you cannot launch the screen why because here dialogue work process are not free which means something is running in the back end or something is running in the dialog mode so so here we have the shortage of the resources or so we need to something is we need to crash it what exactly happening so this is our basis team responsibility normally other functional teams and development teams whenever they open when they will open sap they will just click on it it will if it is open then we are safe if it is not opening immediately they will send an email to basis team i basis team you are unable to log into the sap system something like that they will create the so noise right so that's why we need to check all this work process part of our monitoring we need to check all work process are waiting or not something if at least one work process should be free to pick up your user request so here everything is free in our case everything is free 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 means waiting status so it's a waiting waiting means waiting for the user request waiting for the user request so waiting for the user request so where can apart from that mmc so what is the transaction codes for the dialog work process so apart from the mmc we have so dialog process transaction codes are 
SM50. SM50 is the transaction code. Here we can check the status of the work process SM50. So here how many work process we have? Seven work process. So here, so why because always you will you won't get you will always don't think like uh, always you will get the SAP MMC to see the status. Some organization they don't have the SAP MMC. They won't prefer the SAP MMC. So some organization they have the MMC. You can see the status of the work process and everything. But if your organization if you don't have the MMC, where where can you go ahead and check the all the work process related status here? Why because status is very important. From here only, we will come to know okay, system is very free. So if all are running status means, same as like here, all are running. We have one work process is running. So which user? I logged into the system, 0001, level 01 client with a DDIC user. I logged in. I, I just logged in, right? That's why my, the work process number two picked up, picked my request from logon pad and it is processing my request here. That's why the work process status is running status. The work process is running status. You can see the dialogue. How many dialogues? Six. Total six. And the three six, which means one is occupied. One is occupied. One is occupied. This is the refresh button. This is the refresh button. Okay. So this is the back button. This is the log off button. Okay. This is the OK code box where we can enter the transaction codes. SM50. So SM50 is the transaction code is for the to, so dialogue so we are discussing about the dialogue right so sm50 is the transaction code to check the local work process over you work process over you work process over you work process over you over you means status work process status or over you just over you or status okay whatever it may be so which is better we can see over you or status we can check it out Okay, this is the SM50 and SM66 for the to check the global work process over you. Global work process over you. Okay, global work process over you. Both are same, but so the one is the local. So you have only one application server here. You have only one application server. You have only one application server. So this is the application server here. So some customers in the production, we have the multiple application servers we can install it because of the, so one application will not handle the business all will load. So they will prefer to install the one more application server here. One means one more instance here. So in this case, so it's not possible each and every go ahead, go ahead and check the each and everything instance here. Let's just go to the SM66. So all instances related work process status, we will get it here. So if you have one one in one application server, so you can just check the go to the SM50, you can check the status. If you have the multiple application servers, go to the SM66, then you will see the status of the all the work process here. All the work process related status you can see here. So if you have one, certainly you can simply go to the one and you can see, but multiple is there then how can you log into the multiple application servers and see the status over you all over, see the status of in one glance right it's not possible then just go to the sm66 then you see the status here test work process for all instances all instances all means if you have the more than one so some both some some customers so one instance will not handle the load you have the more users then they will create the multiple application servers like that so multiple application servers they will create it this applications or whatever they, they multiple we can possible that we can so based on that it will segregate the load so so how can we see all in one frame which means sm66 is the transaction code all work process related uh, information we can see it from here sm66 so it's possible we can also install the one more application server that is also possible we can do that one not a problem okay so we can get that one okay this is the sm50 sm66 are the transaction codes for the local work process over you and the global work process over you and the dialogue work process so what is the responsibility of the dialogue work process means to process our user request from sap log button pad so whenever any request is coming whenever any request is coming from the sap logon pad so you are you are opening the sap logon pad even in a desktop, 
just when you click on it, your SAP screen is opening here. How this SAP screen is opening means because of backend, you have the one process that is called the dialogue work process, which is directly communicating to the user. It will pick up the user request. It will pick up the user request. So that's why. So the first work process is the dialogue work process, which is communicating to directly communicate to the user. It will pick up the all users request. Got it? <clears throat> Any questions regarding the dialogue work process? Like that, we have the update NQ background. We have to discuss it about for today. So the one is one of why because you have to practice it. You have to you have to configure all these things in your login pad, and you need to open the SAP login pad. You will configure it. So first transaction code which you have to practice is the SM50. Here you can see the so all the work process overview status, what exactly doing and how many are there, all this information and these tabs you can see. I will explain these topics as well. Then if you are, if you want to go back, just click on the back button. This is the back button. This is the exit button. This is the cancel button. Cancel means you will get to the home page. So just you can go to the SM66. So instead of going back and forth and entering the transaction code, just, just click on the slash N SM50 in the, in the same screen, you will directly go to the SM50 transaction code output. The same screen. So in the go to the SM slash N slash N means new SM66. Then you will directly will go to the, the next transaction code output of the next transaction code. Okay. So you guys please practice this true transaction code. Just understand the concept of the SAP MMC services and everything. And uh, uh, how to add the systems into login pad. Okay. These things you can practice it today. Tomorrow I may ask you. So tomorrow we have the Saturday. So definitely we have the assessment. Okay. Don't skip everyone.